Uh, Georgian Public Broadcasting, Mr. Secretary General, um, you were talking now uh, about uh, implementation process of substantive package. After we will finish this process, uh, I mean the substantive package uh, between Georgia and NATO, what else we can do before uh, our membership, before our invitation to this organization? As we know, Georgian Minister had today uh, some new ideas. What do you think? Thank you. So we will do to, more together with Georgia next year, and we will continue to uh, implement the substantial uh, package, and we will uh, do more together in different areas. Like, for instance, uh, uh, in the maritime domi domain, uh, where we have uh, started to work together, uh, training uh, the Coast Guard, uh, uh, having closer cooperation between our naval forces, but also uh, between uh, the uh, NATO Maritime Command and the uh, uh, Georgian uh, Maritime Operation Center. Uh, we will also have a big exercise next year, uh, which is uh, uh, a strong sign of uh, the close cooperation, how we work together. And um, we are also, of course, uh, very much appreciating the fact that uh, forces, uh, or Georgian forces are participating in NATO exercises, missions. Uh, I mentioned already uh, Afghanistan, but also the fact that Georgia are contributing forces to the NATO uh, response force. So in many different areas, we are doing more uh, together um, uh, in different missions and operations and training. But then, of course, we will... Uh, support, uh, provide support with uh, reforms, with mod modernizing the uh, armed forces of uh, Georgia. And the uh, defense minister uh, put forward uh, some additional ideas. We will, of course, look into them, because this is an ongoing process where we do more together. And I think what the NATO-Georgia Commission meeting today showed, that this is um, something that is of uh, benefit both from, for NATO and for uh, Georgia. This is about protecting each other. This is about uh, supporting each other. This is about um, helping each other. And this is about uh, uh, learning from each other. And it's about uh, uh, facing uh, common uh, security challenges uh, together. So, so we really appreciate the close partnership. And uh, that was uh, strongly expressed by uh, all uh, allies at the meeting today. Gentlemen in the front row here. Mr. Secretary General, I want to touch upon the issue on which today Georgia's Prime Minister Mamouka Bakhtadze made a special statement. The situation concerns a 29 year old Georgian citizen, woman, a mother of three children, which who was detained in the Gori municipality by the occupation forces. You know, we have, we have had recently another case when Georgian citizen. Uh, Archil Tatunashvili was also kidnapped by the occupation war forces and then killed. As we see, Russian uh, occupation still goes on, and in this case, Georgian citizens are kidnapped on their own territory, on the territory of their country. It has been reported that this Georgian uh, citizen with this woman of three children uh, has been sentenced to a two months pre-trial detention. And I think it's very important to call on Russia to stop such activities by the occupation forces. We know what happen, whatever happens on the occupied territories, Russia bears responsibility for with. Uh, we now speak about the life of human beings, about the Georgian citizens who can't live uh, safely along of the bo occupation border and this situation it still goes on and it's repeated and repeated and it's another Georgian citizen which not detained by the occupation forces but is kidnapped. It's hard for me to comment on specific uh, cases I don't know but what I can say in general is that uh, uh, we um, recognize and support the territorial integrity of Georgia within its internationally recognized borders, meaning that we <clears throat> call on Russia to reverse its uh, uh, recognition of uh, Abkhazia and uh, South Ossetia as kind of independent states, because these regions are part of Georgia uh, and within its internationally recognized uh, borders. And we call on Russia to withdraw its forces from both Abkhazia and South Ossetia. And uh, I think that uh, there are many reasons to, uh, to call on Russia to do that. Uh, 
Uh, that's the only way to respect the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of Georgia. But of course, also that's a, a way to address all the uh, incidents and uh, and 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 uh, and uh, um, examples we have uh, related to the challenges and problems this military presence uh, creates for uh, people living in uh, Georgia. Now, the gentleman in the second row, Politiken. <coughs> Jakob Svensson from the Danish Daily Politiken. I would like to, to hear uh, burden sharing is a core issue also on this meeting. It is a matter of fact that Denmark will not be able to fulfill the, the Wales Declaration in 2024. Uh, and I guess uh, quite a number of other countries will not either. What will happen? What is the reaction from the uh, alliance uh, when uh, these countries, for instance, Denmark will not fulfill the uh, Wales Declaration. Let me start by saying that we are actually making a lot of progress. Uh, after years of reducing, cutting defense budgets across the whole alliance, uh, we now have seen uh, four consecutive years with increase uh, across Europe and Canada. And uh, for the first time in many years, we see real increase in all allies, also from uh, all NATO uh, member states. Um, so that's a significant change. It's a totally different picture than we saw just uh, a few years ago. All allies have stopped the cuts. All allies have started to increase. And more and more allies meet the 2% guideline. When we made the pledge back in 2014, only three allies spent 2% of GDP on defense. This year, we expect eight allies to be at 2% or very close to 2%. It depends a bit on GDP uh, estimates. Um, and the majority of allies have put forward plans on how to reach uh, 2% within 2024. I expect all allies to uh, make good on the commitment, the promises uh, we all made together in 2014 in Wales, and which we reiterated as late as in July uh, this uh, year. Uh, so we have a good story to tell. After years of going in the wrong direction, we have started to invest more, and that's f something that applies for all NATO allies, including Denmark. But we still have a long way to go, uh, and uh, we will continue to push uh, those allies who have not put forward credible plans to do so. Uh, and. Uh, 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 I'm not underestimating the challenges, but I'm saying that compared to where we were just four years ago, we have made uh, really significant uh, progress. Let me also add that burden sharing is about more than uh, cash. It's about contributions to NATO missions and operations and about capabilities. And I would like to commend Denmark for being a country which has really contributed to many different NATO missions and operations, uh, especially in Afghanistan, where uh, Denmark also have paid a high price, a high number of um, casualties. Uh, and then uh, Denmark is investing in modern capabilities. Uh, I know that they're now investing in, uh, uh, for instance, F-35s. Uh, so we welcome all of this. Uh, at the same time, uh, it's not uh, contributions cannot substitute for investments. We need more uh, spending and we need better spending. So we will continue to focus both on cash capabilities and contributions and expect all of us to deliver on that. Okay. Lady in the front row. Uh, Olga Kravchenko, you have told, uh, talked about uh, cyber threats and about setting up a cyber operating uh, center and in the next year in Ukraine, uh, presidential and uh, parliamentary uh, election will be held. And is it possible cooperation between NATO and Ukraine to tackle these threats during the election? Yeah. Thank you. NATO have uh, or has uh, has already been helping uh, Ukraine uh, with strengthening its uh, cyber defenses, its uh, cyber capabilities. 
Uh, we are doing that uh, through our trust funds. Uh, we have a trust fund for uh, cyber defense. And uh, by providing funding and uh, support in uh, strengthening the cyber defenses, uh, the cyber capabilities uh, of uh, Ukraine, we also uh, help them with uh, defending their own networks and their own infrastructure. Uh, for instance, uh, NATO is now helping Ukraine with setting up a cyber incident response center, uh, which will be uh, one way to help them to deal with incidents or uh, attempts to interfere uh, or to meddle or to uh, uh, hack into their cyber networks. So uh, we are already providing that kind of help. And uh, uh, I promised President Poroshenko when he was here at the NATO summit that NATO allies will continue to provide support, including to the trust funds. And one of them are actually funding uh, activities related to cyber. Al Arabia, gentlemen of them. Nordi Fridi from the Arabian News Channel. Mr. Secretary General, in Iraq, the, Iraq has now a president and prime minister. I'm talking about Iraq. Uh, I would like to know uh, the level of preparation of the NATO mission uh, when it will start. On the, when will it will start in, in Iraq, a country which uh, Iran is being involved in its instability. You mentioned that uh, very clearly yesterday, as well as France accused it officially. Uh, Iran to be behind the terrorist plot uh, this summer in, uh, in, in France. Germany uh, accept to extradite one uh, Iranian diplomat. So uh, my question about uh, Iran, how concerned NATO is with this uh, Iranian acti intelligence activities in Europe? And uh, do you think that NATO uh, members should take a collective step to push back the intelligence Iran intelligence activities in Europe. Thank you. First on the training mission in Iraq. Uh, well, we um, launched a mission at our summit in July, uh, and now we are gradually increasing our uh, uh, presence. Uh, and uh, we are also very grateful to Canada, uh, which have uh, taken on the responsibility to uh, lead the training mission in Iraq. There will be a Canadian commander that will be uh, in charge uh, of the training uh, mission, and we are gradually now building up uh, this uh, training mission. We have already started to uh, do so. Uh, we have to remember that uh, NATO is already in Iraq. We have been there for some time already, but what we decided at the summit was to launch a new uh, training mission to scale up uh, our presence and, uh, and, and our activities in Iraq, because we strongly believe that the best way to prevent Daesh uh, to come back in, uh, in any form is to strengthen the uh, Iraqi forces' uh, capabilities uh, or their, their capability to be able to fight terrorism themselves. So therefore, training Iraqi forces is one of the best weapons we have in the fight against uh, terrorism. When it comes to Iran, all allies are concerned about uh, the destabilizing activities of Iran in the region. Uh, in uh, uh, different uh, neighboring countries. Uh, we are, of course, also uh, uh, concerned about the fact that uh, uh, Iran continues to provide support to different uh, uh, armed groups in different countries. Uh, so this is something uh, we follow. Uh, and uh, NATO allies are, of course, also working together, for instance, when it comes to intelligence and other ways uh, to address some of the challenges uh, which are related to uh, uh, so destabilizing activities and support for terrorist organizations. Okay, we've got one question over there. Thank you. Uh, Yuri Shiko, Deutsche Welle, Secretary General. You talk, uh, you talk today about uh, Black Sea and Azov Sea is a part of a region. Yeah, unfortunately there wasn't NATO-Ukraine Commission today, but um, uh, the, today, Ministerial is the first one since uh, the escalation taking place in the Azov Sea. You know that Russia is conducting excessive controls of ships co coming to Ukrainian ports. Example, for example, U European ships, and also Russia started several months ago military build-up in the sea, and Ukraine now is building naval base here. What 
NATO is planning to do about it, you know, to alleviate this security challenge, new security challenge. Thank you very much. So we follow the situation in the Azov Sea very closely and we are concerned because what we see is that uh, Russia is impeding normal civilian uh, traffic, uh, commercial vessels, and, uh, and of course that's a problem uh, for Ukraine, uh, which uh, have seen that uh, normal traffic from some of its uh, uh, harbors uh, in Mariupol and uh, other places uh, has been uh, impeded or there have been problems with uh, the normal traffic uh, in and out. Um, uh, I think this just uh, is one example of uh, uh, a pattern we have, we have seen uh, that uh, Russia uh, illegally annexed Crimea, uh, then uh, continued to destabilize uh, uh, especially Donbass, but also through the activities in the Azov Sea, they continue to try to destabilize uh, Ukraine. Uh, so what NATO does is that we provide support uh, with uh, political support, with practical support, uh, partly within the different NATO programs, trust funds, uh, and so on. But of course, NATO allies also provide support bilaterally uh, to uh, Ukraine. Uh, and again, this is about uh, partly political, uh, helping to modernize the Ukrainian armed forces, the security institutions, different trust funds, uh, but also about equipment uh, and, uh, and other kinds of direct uh, support. This was something we discussed uh, when we met uh, President Poroshenko here in July. It was also something I discussed uh, uh, briefly with him and I met him in, uh, in New York recently. Uh, and uh, NATO will continue to provide support to Ukraine, but of course we will also uh, strongly support uh, the efforts to find a political solution uh, to fully implement the Minsk agreements, which is the only viable way to uh, a uh, peaceful settlement of the uh, conflict and the, and the problems we see in and around Ukraine, including the Azov Sea. Thank you very much. This is all we have time for now, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.